As we all know by now, Queen Elizabeth II has passed away. The news media has made it a point to get reactions from around the world. This montage represents reactions from black people around the world. So let's travel. America is up first. Take a listen. Let me talk to the FBA family. Which one of which one of you guys are mourning the queen? That's why we're titled the show today. Who's mourning the queen? Where's the FBA family mourning the damn queen? I, do they know how much we don't give a damn? <laughs> I can speak for FBAs right now. I can speak for black Americans who descended from slaves and freedmen. I can pretty much speak for them right now. We don't give a damn about no queen of England. We ain't tripping on her. Well, we so don't give a damn. Just the average everyday foundational black American, man, nobody gives a damn about that. And we're not even being insensitive. We just don't care. Because we understand the history and we, we know what it is. We see the, the monarchy, we see the, the queen and all of them for what they are. We look at them as a crime family. We already know how scandalous they are. What she did to African people since 1952 is worse than what any other leader has ever done to a people in history aside from enslavement itself. And if you want to say she's only the face, she don't make the decisions. Well, she damn sure didn't stop it either. She didn't stop the assassination of Deedon Kamathi. She didn't stop the torture of the Kenyan Land and Freedom Army. She didn't stop the overthrow of Osajafo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. She didn't stop the murders of Steve Biko, the incarceration of Robert Sabukwe. So many African leaders around the world lost their lives as a result of Queen Elizabeth II. where they are living and the type of houses and the poverty they are experiencing and she wants to walk with that diamond on a crown the king now needs to give that back to South Africa while Germany uh, dealing with Namibia has done apologies there's been nothing coming from the British you colonize our country during colonialism. You expect us to mourn you. No, I cannot mourn the death of Queen Elizabeth. There's a lot of things that happened in the past that one cannot, I, I still struggle, you know, how do we move past that? Or maybe the question is when do we actually have time to address the things that happened back then? So for me, it's, it is a mixed emotion. I honestly could care less that she's dead, you know what I mean? It's sad that she's an older person that she's died, but I honestly don't care. Like, I honestly don't care. Because I just feel like a lot of like, Africans in general were dead because of her, you know what I mean? So I honestly, yeah, I'm not bothered. The Economic Freedom Fighters is the third largest party in South Africa's parliament. One might argue it's a bit of a fringe party, but nonetheless, still the third largest party in, in parliament there. It says, uh, we do not mourn the loss, the death of Elizabeth, because to us, her death is a reminder of a very tragic period in this country and Africa's history. Um, I think it's unfortunate. She lived for a very long time, which I guess speaks volumes to how the royal family is treated in, in the UK. But really, I don't really care about the Queen there. <laughs> well, I feel so sad in a man. And she's a nice lady. And we like how she walk, we like how she talk. And I, I miss her, and I feel it. So life goes on. It just said, God. All we have to do is just bury her and just give God thanks and praise. Blessed love. I mean, I don't have any reaction to her death, though. Uh, I didn't expect her to die so suddenly. But, you know, considering the fact that she would have been with us for quite a long while, but, um, I mean, I just hope all goes well for the country. Well, you know, it has shaken us up because knowing that she, she was around for such a long time and she's one of the longest serving, um, whatever. And, you know, to lose her like this now, it leaves back her impact and we know we're not going to replace her, cannot replace her. 
for the long service that she has done. So we feel it. Well, I'll say I'm not surprised. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Not to say that she won't be missed or her service won't be appreciated, but she was 96, so it was expected. France 24's Vivian Wandera reports on how Kenyans have reacted to the death of Elizabeth II. Seems like people have moved on past uh, very fast from the news of the death of the Queen, mostly because of the colonial history that Kenya has with the United Kingdom. Remember, Kenya was once Britain's colony and only gained independence in 1963. And there are still a lot of wounds and a lot of things that have not been dealt with and spoken about. And these things have come up ever since yesterday when the death of the Queen was announced, with many Kenyans saying, yes, we condone with the people of the United Kingdom, but we also need the British government to acknowledge the mistreatment they put our people through, our ancestors and our grandparents through. And some of these people are still alive to date and are saying that they need the British government to acknowledge what they did to them because some of the, of the land injustices that were committed during the colonial times are still being suffered up until now as people were moved to their homes into other places and are now landless and have nowhere to go, which has become a very issue, a big issue in Kenya. You're from a Nigerian family, grew up in the UK. Mm -hmm. Help explain that contradiction. I wonder how you personally uh, view that. I would say that the relationship that a lot of black people who are British by birth and who have African ancestry, mm -hmm. the relationship that a lot of us have with the royal family is certainly a complicated one. On the one hand, growing up in the UK, you are taught that the royals are the pinnacle of British high society. You are taught respect and reverence for everything that the crown and the scepter mm. stands for. Mm. On the other hand, though, um, you're also aware, you're taught in school, you learn on your own a little bit more about the sort of darker history mm. of colonialism. Yeah. The British Empire was part of the greatest colonial experiment the world has ever known. And you think about what colonialism actually involves, Jim, it is ugly business, okay? Yeah. The business of subjugating people by force mm. is a brutal one. Um, you know, I grew up with stories of, you know, villages in Nigeria um, being burned, you know, um, precious artifacts being looted. Obviously, a lot of people are dying through that entire process. I think that when it comes to Queen Elizabeth specifically, she oversaw much more the sort of breakdown of the British Empire and not the building of mm. it. Mm. And I think that's a really important point to sort of take into consideration. If there is this sort of lingering sense of resentment by some people of colour, because obviously I can't generalise with two million black people that live in the UK. If there is some resentment, I think that it, that it is towards the monarchy, not necessarily the Queen. And there is a distinction, the monarchy versus the Queen. So I felt so sad when I heard about her passing, but I also celebrate her life uh, as a symbol of leadership, symbol of peace. And I remember that she gave us our independence and the plot of gold, and that I'm grateful about. So generally, it's, 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 she, she was highly, really, really recognized here in Nigeria. And uh, to add to that, a street has been named after her in Abuja, the federal capital uh, city here in Nigeria. Uh, before her death, she had visited Nigeria twice in 1956 and in 2003. And I'm reporting to you from Jaws here in northern Nigeria. She had also visited in 1956 when she visited. Uh, she was highly revered here in Nigeria, and uh, it's the expectation or it's the hope of many Nigerians that uh, her soul rests in peace. It's not just a great loss to the Great Britain, but mm -hmm. also Nigeria, which is uh, a British colony. The queen is just, just a queen, and she's just, just a, a monarchical leader to the British people. I think the queen is bigger than Britain. The queen has set example for the rest of the world. I mean, when she visited um, Sierra Leone in the 1960s, in the aftermath of our independence, I was not born, but I was taught in history that her visits turned the corner for the history of Sierra Leone. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and drop your comments below.